Section 1. You will hear two people organising a going away party for a mutual friend. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hey Bruce, looks like we got some planning to do for Albert's going away party, right? There are certainly some things we have to talk about now. Yeah, that's better than doing everything at the last minute. OK, so I can write some notes as we talk. Sure thing. So, when should we have the party? Hmm, he goes to Thailand on the 26th of August. OK, let's have it on the 24th then. Yes, let me see. That's a Friday. That'd be perfect. Now, where should we have it? At a bar or a club? You know, I think he would like something really intimate, nothing too loud. A restaurant would be good. Maybe the Apple Tree Grill? Great place, sounds good. OK, now we have to think about who to invite. Well, his best friend from college. Sure. And his cousins? Right. Oh, yes, his co-workers. Yeah, OK, his co-workers and his boss. Any other people? How about his yoga classmates? Hmm, he does love yoga, but that might be too many people. I suppose so. I can email and text message the invitations. When should I send them? We should send them out soon, but not too early. How about the 16th of August, then? Well, why not give it a few more days? The 13th? All right, I think that's a good time, too. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. OK now, we have to think of a gift. Should we all get one? No, I was thinking we could all give money for the party and the gift. You know, something really nice. Yeah, that'd be better than getting him little things individually. I can ask for the money. Thanks for doing that. How much should we ask for? I think we should ask for maybe $15 each. Is that too much? No, not at all. He's going away for two years. That would give us about $150. That's a good amount. Yeah, well, I'm thinking we could get him something practical. Yes, especially since he's going abroad. Something he could use, something that's also portable. We could get him an article of clothing, perhaps, or maybe even a pair of shoes. Hmm, shoes are nice, but they might wear out easily, especially where he's going. Maybe a book light? A what? Yeah, he loves to read, and a book light would be very convenient when he travels. OK, that's one good gift idea. Did you write that down? Yep. Now, we need to think about reservations at the restaurant. Well, we should get their big banquet room, yeah? Yes, definitely. Should we ask the restaurant to prepare a buffet? Isn't that expensive? No, I don't think it is. A buffet dinner sounds cheaper than everyone ordering individual meals. Definitely. How about drinks? They can buy drinks themselves or bring their own. OK. Yeah, it would cost too much if we bought drinks ourselves. Certainly. We have to ask someone to bring an MP3 player. The restaurant has speakers and we can hook it up for music. Sounds good. Actually, there is one more thing that I thought we should do since Albert is leaving for such a long time. What were you thinking of? Maybe we could have a slideshow of all the fun times we've had. Hmm, that'll take a little bit of work, but I think it's a great idea. Actually, in the invitation, can you ask for some photos people have of him? Yeah, definitely. I can scan them or people can send me digital photos they have. All right. I'll tell them when I send out the invitations. Then I can make a little presentation. Ha! <laughs> I can't wait to see his reaction. Yeah, especially that one picture where... That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 2. Section 2. You will hear a webcast on the Freeman Travel Services website. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen to the first part of the webcast and answer questions 11 to 16. Welcome to the Fremen Travel Services website. We appreciate your visit. Please listen to this introductory webcast for general information. You can click another link at any time. For webcasts in other languages like Spanish or German, please click on the links above the media player. From this website, you can access audio information on our latest travel offers. If you have already made a reservation with us previously and would like to check on its status, please click on the reservations link in the upper right hand corner of the page. We also have information regarding our new line of Extreme Tour packages. Thank you for choosing Freeman Travel Services as your guide. This webcast will explain our recently developed line of Extreme Tour packages. These special vacations were made for those with adventure in mind. We have already gotten awards from a highly regarded travel agency association for these tours. Here at Freeman, we want to help you create memories that last a lifetime. These are not your everyday ordinary tour packages. On these excursions, you will have the chance to challenge yourself and grow as a person. How many other travel agencies can claim to help you do that? We currently offer extreme tours on three different continents. In South America, we have programs in Brazil, Peru, and Argentina. In Southeast Asia, you can go to Thailand or Vietnam. Finally, we just recently started selling spaces for tours in Australia. We also plan to offer more locations around the world in the coming year. Please check this website for future updates. There are highly trained people guiding you on every one of our tours. For those independent travelers, don't worry, there are plenty of opportunities available to explore on your own. Whenever you purchase one of our tour packages, we do our best to accommodate you. Round-trip airfare to your destination is included, along with any accommodation and transportation needed in that country. We don't include food or any sort of entertainment in the price. We know that our customers often want to discover these things by themselves. Before you hear the rest of the webcast, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Following is a brief summary of some of the tours that we offer. Peru is home to an ancient civilization. The Andes Mountains provide stunning views to enjoy when you go hiking and camping on our five-day tour package. There will also be an opportunity to see ancient ruins and also to go whitewater rafting. The people in Peru are very friendly, and you will not forget their generosity and warm hearts. Another extreme tour package we have is in Thailand. They have a very unique culture there, and even our seven-day vacation there might not be enough to see everything. The tour includes an overnight stay on a riverboat, parasailing, and a visit to one of Thailand's biggest cities, Chiang Mai. We also have an excursion to an elephant ranch that you do not want to miss. Finally, we have something really special for you in our newest vacation package in Australia. We have over two weeks of activities, that is 14 days, which take you from the Gold Coast to the Outback and to some of the continent's most exciting places. 
Go on this tour if you want to scuba dive with thousands of tropical fish at the Great Barrier Reef. See the awesome beauty of Australia's deserts and party in some of the best clubs and bars in the country. Thank you for considering Freeman Tours. I invite you to look at the comment board on this website. There you can read the testimonials of all the people who have gone on our tours. That is the end of section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You'll hear a conversation between two student teachers talking about our projects. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hey, Janice. Hey, Jimmy. What's up? Not much. I'm kind of worried about these lessons we have to plan. I've not worked much with children before. Oh, you don't have anything to worry about, Jimmy. All we have to do is choose a few art projects to do with the kids. Then we have to get the materials for them and do the projects by the end of the month. OK, that doesn't sound too bad then. Maybe we could get some ideas from online websites. Yep, already did that. I printed out descriptions of the best five and I wanted to ask you what you thought. Great, yeah. Let's look over them. Here you go. Some are from a teaching website and some are from an arts and crafts website. We can talk about what kind of materials we'll need and what would be best for our students. Hmm. The first art project here is called Make Your Own Mask. That sounds like fun. For materials, all we need are scissors, markers, stiff paper and pieces of string. We have all those at the school already. What's the procedure again? You give everyone the stiff paper. There are some basic guidelines the kids have to follow, like where to cut out holes for the eyes and then one hole for the nose. The kids then colour in the mask any way they want, or we can ask them to create masks with a theme, like animals or something. That seems easy to do. OK, now the second project here. Yes? This one is called Shoebox Dioramas. Each student gets a shoebox and puts one long side of the shoebox into the lid. It now looks sort of like a covered theatre stage. The students then have to create a scene inside the shoebox with the materials we give them, including styrofoam and basically anything else we can think of. We can tell them to do a historical scene, or just somewhere they have been before. All right, well, what's the next one? For art project number three, we need egg cartons and pipe cleaners. What's a pipe cleaner? Pipe cleaners are basically flexible lengths of metal wire that are furry. They come in all sorts of different colours. They're very useful in crafts. For this project, you take the individual egg holder cups 
and stick the pipe cleaners in them to make animals. OK, that sounds interesting. The fourth art project is called Paper Bag Animal. Students can use brown or white paper bags. They decorate these bags with markers or pieces of coloured felt. They decorate the bottom of the bag. When the children put their hands in the bag and hold the bag upright, it becomes a sort of puppet. We'd need quite a few paper bags. Yes, we'd need the small lunch bag kind. The grocery paper bags would simply be too large. OK, I suppose they would have them available at the corner store. Yes, it's not very green to pack lunches in them, but they're still popular to use. So what do you think of the last project? Well, this fifth project sounds fun. It's called Paper Mache Sculptures. We tear some newspapers into strips and dip them into liquid starch. The kids can choose any object to cover with the strips, like a blown-up balloon. After letting them dry, the kids can decorate the paper mache with paint. Sounds a little messy. Shall we go over them and see what's good and bad about each? Sure. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. So, yeah, number one sounds really easy to do, and you mentioned that we already have all the materials, right? Yes, but I think I wanted to do something a bit more hands-on and creative. I mean, I suppose they can wear their masks and play around, but the project is just basically drawing on paper. It might be too easy. I suppose so. What do you think about number two? Well, it certainly is more creative. But do you think that is too hard? I mean, they would have to create whole scenes out of a lot of different kinds of materials. Well, I think that the kids could do it. We would have to give them a little more guidance, but you're right, it might be too difficult for them. How about number three? I did this one as a child. Yes, I tried to make egg carton creatures as well. It was quite fun, as I recall. Do you think we could get the supplies? I suppose, though unfortunately the craft store in town is closed. It might be hard. I see. Well, then, we'd have to find another way to get them if we do this project. OK. Well, what do you think of the fourth art project? Well, when I first looked at it, I thought it might be good, but you know what? Yes, what is it? Actually, I think our students may have already done this art project in another section. Oh, really? You think they have? Yes, I'm pretty sure now, actually. I don't think it'd be good to repeat it. I suppose so. How about the last project? I really like the concept, but it seems really, really messy. I mean, we have to dip the newspaper strips by hand into the starch, then wrap it around something, and finally paint the object after it dries. It sounds really fun, but there will definitely be a lot of cleanup. Well, that's too bad then. Hmm. I guess I can go online and do some more research. You know, I'll help with that too. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm sure we'll find something. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
session four. Section four. You'll hear a lecturer talking about the reintroduction of grey wolves into the wild. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. I am going to talk about one of my favourite animals today, the grey wolf. Similar to other top-level predators like the shark, wolves sometimes have a bad reputation. It is true they do sometimes attack herds of livestock that people depend on. In nature, however, grey wolves are a critical part of the ecosystem. Wolves are larger than the average dog. They also have a keener sense of smell since they are not a domesticated species and still live and hunt in the wild. They hunt in small packs and actually have a sophisticated social system. Scientists have observed that wolf packs are well defined by hierarchies. There is one hierarchy for male wolves and one for female wolves. At the top of each is an alpha male and an alpha female. They are not leaders of the pack according to the human definition. But they seem to have special privileges compared to the other wolves. This privilege has to do more with reproducing rather than having more food. Any pair of wolves in a pack may breed, but is usually the alpha pairs wolf pups that are the most successful. Other pairs may not be able to raise their offspring to maturity, especially when there are limited resources. The alpha status among wolves is not permanent. Wolves are free to challenge the alpha male. These challenges are not necessarily physical fights, but are mostly ritual confrontations that involve bluffing and posturing. There is always the potential for violence, though, and sometimes the jockeying for the alpha status is fatal for one of the participants. The range of the grey wolf and its subspecies used to be quite extensive, almost the entire continents of Asia and North America, and the whole of Europe as well. They are now found mostly in Canada, Alaska, the northern reaches of Eurasia, and a few other scattered pockets. In some parts of the world, grey wolves have actually been reintroduced into the wild. Many people were opposed to these programs at first because they thought it would cause economic hardship for livestock owners. In the United States, local ranchers around the Yellowstone National Park area refused to allow any wolves back. Supporters of the program knew that without cooperation from ranchers. The wolves would likely be shot and killed. Those supporters knew how important the program was and agreed to compensate ranchers for livestock lost to wolves. This important compromise paved the way for the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone in 1995, where they hadn't been seen for over 70 years. The reintroduction has been a great success. Studies show that the biodiversity within the park has increased and is sustaining itself. After the last grey wolves in the park were killed in 1926, the population of elk and deer soared, decreasing the number of plants available to beaver and moose. The beaver eventually became extinct there. The population of other predator species, like the coyote, exploded. This, in turn, caused rodent populations to crash. This crash led to a decline in bird species, like hawks and eagles. These negative trends have all reversed since the wolves came back. As a result, Yellowstone National Park is a better, healthier place. The local economy also benefits because people are not only interested in seeing more biodiversity at the park, but also the wolves themselves. This brings in tens of millions of more dollars annually to local lodgings, restaurants, and stores. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.